At the leading edge of migrating cells, actin assembly and membrane protrusion are closely coordinated with the formation of integrin-based focal adhesions that attach to the extracellular matrix or ECM. As actin polymerizes, it pushes against the plasma membrane and flows backwards toward the cell body. As Claire Waterman from the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute explains, several integrin-associated proteins may act as a molecular clutch to couple this retrograde actin flow to focal adhesions and the underlying ECM. The clutch hypothesis says that what do you got this engine running for at the leading edge unless you engage it to the ECM through focal adhesions, that is just a car running in neutral. So if you engage that clutch through some specific molecule, the actin will slow down, the leading edge would protrude because the force of polymerization that was driving the actin back will now be used to drive the plasma membrane forward and traction force will increase on the ECM at the site of the new focal adhesion. The integrin-associated protein tailin may be one part of the focal adhesion clutch, but Waterman and colleagues, led by postdoc Ingo Teverson, wondered whether the tailin and actin binding protein vinculin might also help couple actin flow to focal adhesions. The researchers therefore generated vinculin knockout fibroblasts and found that actin flowed faster in the leading edge of these cells than it did at the front of wild-type fibroblasts. Normally, actin flows rearward from the lamella podium at a certain rate, and when it runs into an adhesion, it slows down because it's becoming engaged. I mean, that's the idea. So in the absence of vinculin, the actin just flows right over the adhesions without slowing down, exactly like what you would expect from knocking out a clutch molecule. In particular, vinculin was required to slow actin flow at larger maturing adhesions a few microns back from the leading edge, at the border between the protrusive lamellopodium and the adjacent contractile region called the lamellum. And in addition, in line with this molecular clutch hypothesis, you don't build up traction forces at those adhesions. The slowing of actin flow at maturing adhesions is thought to delineate the lamellopodium from the lamellum. Accordingly, in the absence of vinculin and actin deceleration, the two actin-based structures partially overlapped with lamellopodial markers occupying a broader region behind the leading edge and lamelloproteins encroaching closer to the front of the cell. Teverson et al. then turned their attention to how vinculin regulated retrograde actin flow. We hooked up with uh, Sharon Campbell, who is a structural biologist down at uh, UNC, and she was able to predict specific point mutations in vinculin that would disrupt its actin binding. And they worked beautifully and allowed us to test the hypothesis that these changes in actin dynamics were specifically due to actin binding directly because vinculin binds all these signaling proteins that could affect actin dynamics, the ARP23 complex that obviously affects actin dynamics, but, you know, if vinculin was acting as a clutch, it would be changing these actin dynamics by binding to actin directly and engaging the actin flow to the adhesions. Sure enough, vinculin point mutants with reduced actin binding capacity fail to restore normal actin dynamics at the leading edge of vinculin knockout fibroblasts. Retrograde flow was slightly reduced at maturing adhesions, but not enough to establish a clear border between the lamellopodium and lamellum there was a partial rescue of the actin retrograde flow speed, suggesting that some other functions of vinculin contribute to slowing down actin retrograde flow at the lamellopodium lamellum junction, but actin binding is a strong contributor to that as well. Teverson et al. then turned their attention to how vinculin affects the dynamics of focal adhesions at the cell's leading edge. So normally you have this little rim of nascent adhesions at the front of the cell, and most of those little adhesions turn over, and a small fraction of them, about 5 or 10%, go on to form these big, fat, mature adhesions that probably are important for ECM remodeling and holding down the whole tail of the cell. But in the absence of vinculin, there are way, way less of these nascent adhesions forming. So somehow, vinculin is important for coupling protrusion with the formation of nascent adhesions. However... Although vinculin knockout cells formed fewer nascent adhesions in their lamellopodia, 
the adhesions that did form were more likely to mature into larger adhesions instead of disassembling. And once they decided to mature, they would mature at a much faster rate in the absence of vinculin. So vinculin was slowing down adhesion maturation. Tevis and et al. then investigated whether vinculin regulated focal adhesion dynamics by binding to actin. Vinculin mutants with reduced actin binding capacity failed to enhance the formation and turnover of nascent adhesions in vinculin knockout cells, indicating that actin binding is required for this aspect of vinculin's function. The actin binding mutants did slow the rate of adhesion maturation slightly, but actin binding is still involved in inhibiting focal adhesion growth. In fact, Tevis and et al. think that vinculin tempers adhesion growth indirectly by slowing retrograde actin flow. So that was very surprising to me. You know, people think adhesion maturation is tension dependent. You tug on an adhesion, that makes it strengthen and elongate. But what we found was even though the adhesions were maturing faster, the adhesions were actually producing less force. And what Ingo noticed was that the maturation rate, the rate at which the adhesions grew, was directly related to the rate that actin was undergoing retrograde flow. So in the absence of vinculin, where the actin was flowing faster, the adhesions were maturing faster. In the presence of vinculin, the actin was flowing slower, and the adhesions were maturing slower. So this says that adhesion maturation is probably force-independent and more actin flow speed dependent. Vinculin therefore coordinates actin and focal adhesion dynamics at the leading edge of migrating cells. As part of a molecular clutch, vinculin engages actin to maturing focal adhesions, slowing retrograde actin flow and generating traction on the ECM. The reduced actin flow delays adhesion maturation and helps delineate the lamellopodium and lamellum. In addition, Vinculin promotes the formation and turnover of small nascent adhesions at the leading edge to couple cell protrusion and adhesion. But what do Waterman and colleagues want to investigate next? We have one more paper that we're working on with vinculin, and that's sort of testing how vinculin gets recruited to adhesions and moves from the plasma membrane where it can bind paxillin and phospholipids up into the actin binding layer 50 to 100 nanometers away and how binding in those different layers of the focal adhesions correlates with force transmission, adhesion maturation, and other vinculin functions. In the meantime, you can learn more about how vinculin regulates actin and focal adhesion dynamics in the paper by Tevis and et al., published in the July 8, 2013 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. Thank you.